lazy dude time man, we gotta read some comics. Guess we're gonna read them. This lazy dude time, gotta tell you all about it. Let's all go and read their comics. to review the graphic novel Joker. Now Joker was written by Brian Azzarallo and the art was by Lee Burmijo. I don't know, I can't understand the name that well. But hey, it, it was, it, the basic story was Nobody knows why or how, but Joker was being released from Arkham Asylum. He didn't escape, he was just released. Now, our main, um, even though the main character is the Joker, the story is mostly se seen through the eyes of Johnny Frost, who is basically this henchman, or this no-name henchman, that wants to make it big in the world, and he wants to be like the Joker, he wants to be a big man, big top of the crime lord, right? So when Joker comes back, no one has shown him any respect while he's gone. He's been, um, he was basically all of his partners in crime took the money for himself, and so Joker comes out, he's complete broke, and he has no control over Gotham. So what does Joker want to do? Well, for one thing, he wants to take back Gotham for himself. And for another thing, he just wants to kill people. So, um, I love the art in this. This, it almost, it looks like it's painted, and, but it also looks like it's drawn. It's a, it's a weird combination. I, you don't usually see art like this. Um, Joker's face looks, uh, it looks really discarded and a little horrifying. Um, Harley Quinn, I'm not really sure how I like how they did it, because I like my oddball, screwball Harley Quinn, the one who just does... Mr. J and all that, but no, this she was just she doesn't even say one word. Um, they really made Joker crazy in this. I, I mean, like, not of course Joker's crazy, but what I mean is like uh, he does crazy things. And there's this one scene where um, he puts a bullet in in the gun, spins it around, and puts it in his mouth and clicks it. I mean, no one would do that. And and like there's scenes with him taking drugs. And partying. And there's one scene actually where he um, he cuts, he skins a guy. He takes all the skin off of the guy, showing nothing but, and then there's nothing on him but his muscle. It's really disturbing and horrible. I don't mean horrible as in badly written, but it's like Sweeney Todd. If you don't like violence or blood, you're not gonna like Sweeney Todd. But it's still very well written. Um. Throughout the story, the, the way that Joker, they have Joker is basically, it's really good. It, the psychological th things that they give Joker. Huh? On one hand, he, he, um, he hates Batman. But on another side, you see him, like, there's a time where he goes into a building, kills a whole bunch of people, and then he walks out and he's like, Isn't that enough for you? Come get me, or he doesn't say come get me, but he's like, not enough, right? I mean, like, well, I have to do more. He he feels like the more he does, the more he's like he's almost like doing it to in his own sick way to please Batman. Oh, even though he's really just doing it to piss him off. But it, and then when Batman comes, you can see Joker's like, no, it's all coming down. So it, he's like Gollum, you know? <laughs> it's Batman. No, he loves Batman. No, well, okay. But, you know, he he likes, um, you know, he wants Batman to interfere, and he also does it. It's a weird psychological way to show things. Uh, two faces in here already. Um, There was one scene in it that uh, I'm, I'm not really too sure about where 
Two-Face is talking to Johnny Frost, and he says, if you work for the Joker, you're going to die. He's going to kill you. You know, I'm thinking, Two-Face, you're not really the happy-go-lucky villain yourself. You kill henchmen all the time, too. So what are you doing? I mean... But, hey, um, there's a, there's a good part where Two-Face and Joker, you know, to show that Joker is Batman's top villain and Two-Face's second best. Batman's barely even in this. You, you, um, until the very end, and he says one word, one line. And, and this is just all about the Joker and Johnny Frost. And, um, it, it is told really well. It's really well written. I recommend picking this up. But also, I must say that this is not for the faint of heart. I mean, I would not let anyone, like, 13 or under read this. Heck, maybe I'd be leery about letting a 14-year-old read it. But, um, you know, it's because it's very... It's very graphic. It's very, um... It's very evil. You know, there's... Is a scene in it where Joker kills these old people. It, it, it was just he just breaks into this hotel, breaks into this room, and there's these two old people laying in the bed. And Johnny Frost is like, "Who are these people?" He says, "Who cares?" And next scene is this local Joker lying on this bloody bed. It's very graphic and a very, very evil. Like they they show Joker is like really evil. And. But um, it's a great story for Joker. Um, these ta this, these guys also did a book um, called Lex Luthor, Man of Steel. Um, so, and I think they uh, do a really good job of showing who, showing things through the eyes of the villain. For Lex, he thinks that he is the good guy, right? But Joker, he knows that he's evil and he just wants to do whatever the heck he wants. And so I recommend picking this up. I do. Um, it would be a great read for you guys, um, for those who like the Sinister. The artwork's really nice. And it's just a great addition to Joker's history in comics. So remember, I'm Lazy Dude 99 If I don't like it, it's not worth it. Be sure to check out more of my other videos on my channel, and wait for more coming soon.